In the first video on setting up the ATD autofocus, we covered things like tracking sensitivity, uh, as well as accelerate, decelerate tracking, and autofocus point switching. We also took a look at the 45 point autofocus grid on the camera. Uh, in today's video, we're going to go back to the menu, use the Q button to skip till we get to the orange tab, custom function number two, which gives us all of our autofocus options. And as we already dealt with one, two, and three in the first video, we're jumping in on number four, which is titled AI Servo First Image Priority. So really what this, uh, what this screen allows us to control is how much time the camera has for focusing to take place when we're shooting in servo. So moving subjects, uh, we're trying to track those subjects with our camera. We pushing the shutter button halfway down or if we're using back button focusing, we're keeping the button depressed. But what this slider allows us to do is to control timing. So it's got, if we just take a look at the slider, it has release on the left and on the far right, it's got focus. So I'm gonna push set to go in and the default is equal priority. Uh, if we move it over to the far right, focus priority means even though we're in servo, moving subjects, the, the camera is going to try to focus and keep trying to focus. Uh, and it will make us wait until it's confirmed or uh, thinks that it's confirmed focus before we can actually take the image. If we put it in the middle, this is an equal priority setting, basically a balance between how much time is given over and how quickly it will, it will shoot. And if we go to the far left, it's called release priority. Uh, what that means is that seven frames a second is what this ATD can shoot at. And if you are shooting at seven frames a second, that means there's a limited amount of time for focusing to happen between each frame uh, or actually before the frame in this case. Uh, and focusing still happens between every frame before the first frame is fired but it's governed by how much time is available and it's also that amount of time is finite. If the camera hasn't confirmed focus, it's going to trip the shutter and start the process again for the next image. So I'm going to also show you that this setting is for the first image in a burst and Canon also allow us to control the second image and onwards in a burst. So in a different way, which is quite a, it's quite a handy way to fine tune your own preferences. Um, so a similar slider with focus on the far right and speed on the left, which pretty much the same meaning as release, but for whatever reason, they use different uh, terminology there can be a little confusing. But what it means is the second image in a burst, so as long as you're keeping your finger on the shutter uh, from image number two until you let go, that's where this parameter takes effect. The default setting for first image priority on the ATD is in the middle, which is equal. But to illustrate how it works, I'm going to set it onto focus priority Remember that's for the first image. Then I'm gonna to go to option number five on the menu, uh, which second image and onwards. Also the default is in the middle. I'm gonna put that to focus. So now I'm going to remove the camera from the gimbal and I'm going to focus it and shoot a burst. So what you can hear is that the camera can fire quite quickly like that um, because it's trying to confirm focus between every frame, but the subject was not moving. Uh, I kept pretty much still and steady to simulate a static subject. So it didn't have much work to do between each frame because 
there was no change in the position of the subject. The way I'm going to try now is to actually move the camera as I keep my finger down to simulate a moving subject. So what you can hear is that the frame rate slows right down on the ATD when we've got focus priority selected for the first image and for the second image onward. So all that that illustrates is that the camera is trying by all means to focus as accurately as it can. If you find that uh, having your camera set uh, on focus priority is giving you images that are all accurately focused and you're okay with that slower frame rate, uh, you can leave it there. Uh, on the other hand, if you um, would like to benefit from the faster frame rate, we can do that by going in and changing. So let's go to menu number four first. We're going to change that one from focus to release. And we're going to go to menu number five, which is second image onwards. We're going to push set to go in there and change that one to speed. So what I'm doing by selecting uh, speed and by for the second image and release for the first one is telling my camera that I want focusing to happen before the first frame and between the frames in the burst, but I don't want the camera to delay firing the shutter if focus can't be confirmed. So focusing still happens, it's just that the amount of time is limited. So to compare how it shoots with a static subject, I'm going to hold down the shutter now, and you can see it's shooting pretty much at the seven frame a second uh, rate. I'm going to now simulate a moving subject by uh, moving, and you can see uh, with with both options set onto uh, speed or release, I'm getting a faster frame rate. So it will depend on your own on your own skill level, uh, on the kind of subject matter that you shoot, how fast it moves, uh, how difficult it is for focusing to, to, uh, to take place, uh, which one of these parameters is the right one for you. So for my own uh, ATD, I prefer to have the first image set on release, and that's because when I pick up my camera, I don't want to have a lag or pause before the first frame fires. So I have release for the first frame, and then if I move over to second image priority, I also have speed as my preference. So that enables me to get more frames uh, out of bursts of moving subjects. Should I find that a lot of the frames are out of focus, then I can come back easily uh, and then change this one to equal priority, giving a little bit more time for focus between each frame. And if that helps and I can see, okay, that made a tangible difference, I'm getting more photos uh, in focus and it's not slowing down too much, uh, then I can leave it there. But generally, I, I keep it set on release uh, until I notice otherwise. If you do decide to opt for focus uh, for the first frame in the, in the, uh, before the first image goes and for the second image onwards, uh, then just be aware that you may slow the camera down quite a lot. So it's a, a very powerful set of, uh, of um, focus parameters that we are given control of. And now we're going to move on to the next focus uh, option in our menu, which is number six on the menu. So this one here says autofocus, assist beam firing. Uh, really what that does is it will, uh, in very low light, uh, it, will, it will use uh, either the flash or uh, I think the flash to try to uh, assist the autofocus. Not something that I use for wildlife, but you may find it useful to keep it on. Um, I don't really bother about it too much. 
This one says lens drive when autofocus is impossible. So uh, it's not something that you notice much when you're using lenses with short focal length, but if you zoomed in a long way, uh, maybe at 300 or 400 or millimeters, and you, you lose focus while you're using uh, uh, the camera and autofocus, if you keep the ATD set on zero, it will continue to drive the focus on the lens back and forth until it locks on. If you set it on to stop focus search, if it becomes deeply out of focus, it will stop searching. So that can be quite disconcerting. Uh, and uh, for myself, I keep mine on zero. Uh, moving on to option number eight, which really uh, allows us to select just which of the four focus groupings we prefer to have available uh, in our viewfinder and how we can cycle through them, which is something that was covered uh, on the first autofocus video um, on the ATD. So I'm going to just uh, move along there. The next one is number nine, uh, autofocus area selection method. So we have uh, a single focus point or we've got a group of nine or th more than that. But how do we switch between those different groupings? So if I choose by choosing option zero, uh, I activate the little button that uh, lives next to the shutter. So I find that that's an easy way for me to switch from one point to a group without looking away from the viewfinder. Um, the other option is on the main dial, but I prefer uh, zero. Our next autofocus Option is menu number menu item number ten. Uh, this allows the ATD to uh, automatically uh, switch what kind of focus grouping and which focus point you might want to use if you change the camera's orientation. So, if you um, happen to go from horizontal to vertical, and perhaps if you, particularly uh, useful if you're shooting some sort of uh, sport or behavior where your subjects always end up in the same location, then you can choose uh, what focus grouping you want and whether you want an upper focus point or a left one or right one each time you switch the, fo the, the camera's orientation. Uh, for me, I shoot a variety of different subjects. Some of them work best in a vertical orientation. Others uh, work well in a horizontal but I have little predictability uh, to where they are in my frame so for that reason I prefer to leave my choice on zero which means that uh, the focus points don't switch automatically when I tilt my camera. Moving on to option number 11 this one uh, deals with the location of focus point when we switch from shooting with a single focus point to the 45 point autofocus grouping. So by keeping it on option two, which is manually selected autofocus point, wherever I've left my camera when I'm in single focus point mode will be exactly where the focus point is active when I start shooting with 45 point. So quite a useful uh, little menu option and parameter so that number 11. On to number 12 in the menu. This one is to do with color tracking. So the ATD has got quite a complex and quite a powerful uh, color metering system. Um, by enabling color tracking, uh, information from, from the, the light meter is actually uh, used by the regular uh, autofocus to try and assist with accurate uh, tracking. But I've not found that it makes a big difference for the kind of subject matter that I shoot. So I prefer to leave it on uh, one, which is disabled in this uh, instance. The next one is autofocus point selection movement. So choosing option zero stops at autofocus area edges. What that means if, um, looking at my focus grid and I wish to move my focus point all the way to the edge, 
if I keep pushing right, even though I'm on the far right, you can see that the point stays in one place. If I had chosen continuous, it would kind of loop around all the way to the left. But I prefer the point to stop where I leave it. So that's option number 13. Moving on, we've got autofocus, po autofocus point display during focus. This menu item really deals with how your focus points appear when you're looking through the viewfinder. So not something that I can really show on the back screen of the ATD easily, but really just a personal preference. So you can, you can have anything from uh, all 45 points visible uh, as black squares like I do, uh, and then the one that I've chosen becomes uh, outlined in a thicker black. Uh, or you can have nothing if you choose option 4, disable display. But it's really a personal preference on how you want your viewfinder uh, to look with regard to your focus points. We're going to go back to, on to the next one. Viewfinder display illumination. Uh, this just deals with uh, when and how the autofocus points uh, will light up. So um, another, I just leave it on the default option, which is zero. So that means that when it's um, when the ambient light is getting pretty low, uh, then those focus points will become illuminated in red. You can also initiate it yourself by pushing the button on the far right back of your camera. So that can allow you in a dark or gloomy place just to see where your focus grid and where your focus points are lying. Uh, then on to the last option there, which is number 16, autofocus micro adjustment. This is a setting that allows me to fine tune focusing uh, on a lens and my particular camera body. But again, until I actually experience an issue where I find um, poor focus performance, uh, I leave it disabled. It's not something that I uh, routinely uh, set uh, or, or work with all the time. But that pretty much covers, along with the first video, uh, setting up and some idea of the understanding the capabilities of the ATD's autofocus. So time to get outdoors now and uh, see if you can put some of those settings to use and getting some and getting some really good uh, wildlife images subscribe to this channel if you want to keep getting videos about canon gear from a wildlife photographer's perspective